Go. Go in and take possession of the land. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments, or today, I want to encourage you to go and possess the land by any means necessary. By any means necessary. I truly believe that if we take a realistic look at life, we can agree with Miles Monroe as he states, the cemetery holds a wealth of untapped potential, representing missed opportunities for companies that were never started. Inventions that were never made. Best-selling books that were never written. Ministry <coughs> that never came forth. And masterpieces that were never painted. The cemetery, my brothers and my sisters, serves as a reminder of the untapped treasures and unfulfilled possibilities that never came to be. Wow. It is unfortunate, Deacon is gladden, that the graveyard holds so much untapped potential. This is because many people for various reasons, fail to tap in to their God-given process that leads them to their purpose where they can maximize their God-given potential. However, on today, we want to focus on understanding what we need to do to maximize our potential in 2024. We must have a mindset as we prepare ourselves to possess the land to embrace the greater things that God has in store for us individually and collectively. Yes, there are greater things for each and every one of us. We just have to do like the songwriter says. He says, just keep your faith. And never cease to pray. Just walk upright, call him new day or night. He'll be there. And there's no need, such as the code, to worry because God never fails. As we begin this pilgrimage, out of this first week of 2024, there may be some uncertainty about where this year is going to take us. My brothers and my sisters, it is normal to feel anxious about the unknown, but we should never fear it. However, our mandate as the body of Christ is to rise up from our places of comfort and move according to God's will and God's way. And we must grasp the fact that God has the greater in store for us. But we must find, we have to find ourselves immersed in God's will and God's word in 2024. There must be a dedication, Reverend Slater, to be connected 
and stay committed to God and being connected and stay committed to one another. Because we must understand that the body of Christ should not divide. Your body ain't never divided. So we should not only have a connection to God, but we need to stay committed and stay connected to one another. And as we go forth, and as we move, as we live, and as we love, we begin to develop, cultivate, and demonstrate our faithfulness to him. But my brothers and my sisters, we must be willing to submit ourselves to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I want us to understand that when we submit ourselves to God, he is going to take us down a path. And many times that path is not the path that we envision for ourselves. But it is our mandate to move under the guidance of God in righteousness and holiness. And let me throw this in parenthetically. In 2024, holiness is still right. Holiness is still right no matter what comes our way. Holiness is still right no matter what folks say about you. Holiness is still right even in the midst of uncomfortable circumstances. Furthermore, as we seek to move, as we seek to grow and rise up, we must have a mindset to take possession of the promises that God has promised us. And we are to take hold of the promises by our faith. And we should be willing to seize the promises of God by any godly means necessary. If you want greater faith, grasp hold of it by any means necessary. If you want greater intimacy with God, grab hold of it by any means necessary. If you want greater influence in ministry that enhances the life of others, grab hold of it by any means necessary. If you want a stronger relationship with God and his people, grab hold of it, my brothers and my sisters, by any means necessary. If you want financial abundance, if you want spiritual growth and development, if you want to overcome anxiety on today, if you want to make a positive impact in this world, grab hold of it by any godly means necessary. See the songwriter said, I am weak and I need thy strength and thy power to help me over my weakest hour. Let me through the darkness thy face to see. Lead me. Oh Lord, lead me. Lead me. Guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk. Each day with thee, lead me. Oh Lord, lead me. Deuteronomy 31 verse 9 states that this law was written down 
by Moses. And this verse most likely refers to chapter 1 through 30. We understand that the majority of the book of Deuteronomy consists of messages delivered by Moses to the Israelites on the plains of Moab, marking the end of their 40 year wilderness experience. Deuteronomy, my brothers and my sisters, is the final installment of the biography of Brother Moses. Deuteronomy consists of three sermons and two prophetic poems about the future of Israel. To the book, it reflects on the past failures of Israel. And see, Moses is urging the people not to repeat those mistakes as they entered the promised land. My brothers and my sisters, we've made a lot of mistakes. Yes, yes, we have. Yes. Individually and collectively. Because all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But if we are going to take possession of the land, Sister Regina, we cannot live the mistakes that we made 10 years ago. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't be making the same mistakes over and over and over again. It is time for us to embrace the promises of God as we go forth to take possession of the land. But in the text, Moses is telling the Israelites to go from the mountain of Horeb and to possess the land that God has promised them. Dina Smith, the key verbs in our text are go and possess. My brothers and my sisters, we've all had some type of education. So we understand that go and possess are in the present tense. This indicates, speaking words, that Moses is instructing them to take action in the present moment. Furthermore, it implies that these actions to go and to possess should not only be performed in the present moment, but should also continue to happen consistently. All right. Sister Sharon, if we're going to go and to possess, we can't just go and possess on Sunday morning. Amen. Somebody missed what I'm saying. Let me go over here this time. Ready? If we are going to go and to possess, we are not just to go and to possess on Sunday morning. Too many times we want to show up to show out at church. But if we're going to go and to possess, we need to do it right now and keep it going. We have to understand that Deuteronomy is a motivational, sermonic, and poetic mosaic collaboration. <laughs> and it is simply urging Israel to be faithful 
faithful and obedient now and continuously. That's right. Let me go back to Sister Sharon. Sister Sharon. If we're going to go and possess the land, there needs to be some faithfulness and some obedience in our repertoire. Let me go back over here to Ray. Ray, if we're going to go and possess the land, there has to be some faithfulness and some obedience in your wife's inconsistency. Amen. So we got to do more than just show up at home. Man. Let me go back 12 years. I was having a talk with Montez Johnson. We call him Minister Johnson. He said the problem is some folks just want to come to hope. They don't want to go to heaven. So the question is, do we want to come to hope? I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> or is our main goal to get to heaven? If our main goal is to get to heaven, there has to be some faithfulness. There has to be some obedience. And there has to be some consistency. Amen. The circumstances of this word of encouragement to Israel it's significant because of their past failure a generation earlier to conquer the land. At this particular point, they are in the plains of Moab, as we mentioned before, waiting to get to Canaan. And the teachings of Moses or the sermons of Moses do have a purpose. How many of you know that sermons have purpose? Yes. <laughs> Let me throw this in parenthetically. They are not to make you jump and shout. <laughs> Amen. Come on, come on. Tell them. They are vehicles of learning. They are not to mock other folks. This is the time where we talk about the victory in Jesus. So the sermon, the sermons by Moses had purpose. He was instructing them a basic principle. Don't repeat the same mistakes we made before. Yes. Yes. ATBC, we cannot make the same mistakes we made before yes. if we're going to possess the land. Amen. The theology that we find in Deuteronomy is purposeful. And it's presented to convince Israel to trust God, to obey God, and to conquer the land. Remember Slater? The same is true for 2024. We must be willing, Mother Woods, to hear the voice of God, trust the promises of God, to obey the direction of God and by faith take hold of the promises of God. Furthermore, as we take hold of the promises, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to listen to me closely. We are to never let them go. Tell your neighbor, don't let it go. So you have to understand as we begin to gently move farther into 2024, 
We have to understand that God is all powerful. Yes, he is. We have to understand that God is all knowing. Yes, we have to understand that God has never and will never make a mistake. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. In error. Due to the fact that he is all powerful. Yeah. Due to the fact that he is all knowing. Yes, yes. And due to the fact that he makes no mistakes, we have confidence in 2024 that trusting God and his promises will guide us to higher ground. <laughs> Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Canaan's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on a higher ground. Do I got some folks that want to go higher on today? I encourage you on today to simply trust God and to hold on to his promises. You may have failed in 2023. But on today, trust God and hold on to his promise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You may not have been the most desired one in 2023, but trust God on today and hold on to his promise. You may have been misrepresented. You may have been dismissed by some friends. You, have been, you may have been talked about. 2023 may have been problematic, but I come by here to let you know that we all had issues in 2023. But our mandate is to continue to trust God and to hold on to his promises. We have confidence in knowing that when God promises something, he is faithful to fulfill it. The book of Deuteronomy. Mother Williams, it reminds us of the faithfulness of God. And it encourages us to trust in his promises. Just like Moses instructed the Israelites to go and possess the land. We too, in 2024, are called to step out on faith and take hold of the promises God has for us. So with it all understood, how can we effectively embrace the incredible plan God has in store for us in 2024. Number one, we equip ourselves and we allow ourselves to be equipped spiritually as we prepare mentally to rise up and go out of our current situations yeah. and move towards the destination God has preordained for us. My brothers and my sisters, this involves developing an attentive ear to hear God's voice. Yeah. Cultivating a receptive heart to receive his guidance yeah. and demonstrating a resolute will to obey his commands. Yeah. Point number two, as we rise and move out of our current situations <clears throat> towards the destination God has preordained for us, mm -hmm. listen to me closely, it is imperative that as we rise 
And as we move, we do so under the direction of the Holy Spirit and in the holiness and righteousness of God. <clears throat> this involves following God's directions as he orders our steps. Yes, yes, yes. And as he guides us to the place he has appointed for us to be. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. As we rise and as we move, it is our mandate <coughs> to engage in evangelism. We can't keep them to ourselves. We must engage in evangelism and we are to minister to one another in the spirit of love with encouragement and in unity. <clears throat> Number three, as we go into this season of great expectations, we take hold and we intentionally take possession of the promises of God by faith. This involves embracing every promise. Every promise that he has spoken to you and over you. So it should be seen. <clears throat> and everyone under the sound of my voice. I encourage you to have an any means necessary kind of faith. Our any means necessary kind of faith is rooted in trusting God, in having faith in the promises of God. Amen. Understand on today, there will be situations that are beyond our control. Yes, yes, yes. Stay true to the promise yes. by any means necessary. Yes. There will be those that don't understand the anointing on our lives. But HBC, protect your oil. Stay true to the promise. By any means necessary. There will be those who try to limit our progression. Stay true to the promise. By any means necessary. We will be lied on. We will be talked about. We will experience temporary frustration, but stay true to the promise by any means necessary. I want to let you know there will be obstacles along the way. We won't always be called on, and we won't always be appreciated, but we must rise above adversity and negativity. We must face our struggles with integrity. Yeah. Remember, frustration, my brothers and my sisters, yeah. is a temporary emotion. Yeah, that's right. Simply lean yeah. on your faith. Yeah. Stay true yeah. to the promise yes, yes. by any means necessary. See, the songwriter says it may not be on the mountaintop or over the stormy sea. It may not be at the battle front. My Lord will have need of me. But if my Savior calls me to pass, I do not know. I'll answer, dear Lord, with my head lifted up. I'll go where you want me to go. We make it uncomfortable. We're going to go where he wants us to go. We will experience opposition. We will go where he wants us to go. Yeah. There will be, we will encounter problems and situations. We are going to go where he wants us to go. Yeah. Our bodies, they may get tired. We may get aggravated and stagnated. We are going to go where he wants us to go. We will experience loneliness and isolation. We will question our abilities and we may question the call. We will encounter unexpected roadblocks 
we're going to go where he wants us to go. Living for Jesus, a life that is true. Striving to please him in all that we do. Yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessing for you and for me. In 2024, we are going to live for Jesus. This is the pathway of blessings for HMBC. In 2024, we are going to serve in excellence. This is the pathway of blessing for HMBC. In 2024, we're going to live right. We're going to love right. We're going to walk right. This is the pathway of blessing for HMBC. In 2024, we are going to progress in the holiness of God. This is the pathway to blessings for HMBC. As we embrace the promise, Amen. we are protected by his love. As we embrace the promise, Amen. we are renewed by his mercy. As we embrace God's promise, we have hope in his forgiveness. As we embrace God's promise, we are refreshed yes. in his faithfulness. We are restored through his sacrifice. We are strengthened by his power. We find healing in his presence. We receive comfort through his peace. We experience joy in his grace. We discover our purpose in his plan. We gain strength in his promise. In every aspect of life, we can find direction by trusting in his love. We find the greatest sense of peace by trusting in his love. We find strength for the process by trusting in his love. We find strength for today. We find hope for tomorrow by trusting in his love. And if we trust in his love, we can go and possess the land when there are disturbances. We can go and possess the land. Danger seems close. We can go and possess the land. When we feel like we are lost. When we feel like we can't find our way. We can still go and possess the land. It is our mandate yes. for 2024 yes. that we simply go yes. and possess. Yes. We have to do this, my brothers and my sisters, mm -hmm. by any godly, godly means necessary. Amen. Any godly means. Mm -hmm. So how? Can we effectively embrace the incredible plans God has in store for us individually and collectively in 2024? Number one, prepare spiritually and mentally to embrace God's plan for us in 2024. Number two, follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit and live in holiness as we pursue God's ordained destiny. Yeah. And last but not least, embrace and possess God's promises. And we're going to embrace and possess God's promises through intentional Faith. As we enter this season 
of great expectations. I don't know about you, but I am expecting the greater from God in 2024. So HMBC, I'm going to say it one more time and I'm going to leave you alone. I want you to have and any means necessary kind of faith. Yes. I want you to take the ministry mm -hmm. by any means necessary. I want you to love your neighbor by any means necessary. I want us to build up the walls by any means necessary. Love our Lord with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul by any means necessary. Tell your neighbor, we can't be stopped. We can't be stopped. We can't be stopped. Go and possess the land. Go to the church of God.